Pleasant day, everyone. Um, shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Our kind and loving Father in heaven, we thank you this World Pathfinder Day for the message that you have prepared for your children. Help us to hear you speak to us, and may you guide us through the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Morning, Pathfinders. Morning, church. Morning, everyone. We have a message today from God. It's going to speak to us. It's going to speak to us individually. It's going to speak to us as a church. We're going to share um, from the topic, I will go. Our text of consideration is going to be first Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. I'll read in your hearing. Then David said to Saul, no one needs to be discouraged by this Philistine. I myself will go. There are so many examples in the Bible of young people who have done great things under the, under, while God was using them. We have examples of Josiah, uh, the king of Israel. He was a king at eight. We have Joseph in Genesis chapter 37. We have the little maid of Israel, 2 Kings chapter 5. She was a foreigner in a land uh, where she was a slave, yet she loved her masters and served her masters so well and diligently, such that a letter was written on her behalf, on, on Naaman's behalf, by the king of Syria to the king of Israel. There is also this young lad who gave away his lunch in John chapter 6. He gave the smallest of gestures in giving five, five loaves and two fishes to the disciples of Jesus, which later on served 5,000 men, excluding children and women. This shows us how even the smallest of gestures in Jesus' hands will accomplish much. David is another well-known youth, youth in the Bible who served God uh, as a shepherd boy, he was used by God to accomplish many a task. The Bible in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 reminds us that let no one despise your youth, but be an example to believers in charity and in kindness. So live so that all the people who follow your example are led to salvation. So the message today in capsule form is this. Despite our age, despite your age, despite your circumstances, if, if you place your life in the hands of God, he will do a great work with you in this world and in preparation for the world to come. He chooses to use people of all ages, of all races, to accomplish his purpose. And God can choose you if you allow him. So at the end of this message, it is my prayer that both you and me will tell God, I will go, and we know that God will go with us. So, when no one is encouraged to go, or no one has the courage to go, we should be willing to say, I will go. We find for our message today, in, in a battlefield in Israel, we find David uh, being sent by his father, to go and uh, find out how his brothers were doing in the war. Goliath was there, an extremely strong enemy and experienced fighter. The Bible tells us that um, Goliath had two surnames, the terrible giant, the breaker of bones. He was standing at a height of 2.97 meters. Even today, that's a very tall man. Goliath was not only intimidating in his stature, but also in his demeanor. Goliath had a long history of violence and intimidation. Um, his personal record spoke highly of uh, how well he was a master of his craft. But David did not, this did not deter David in saying that I will go and fight Goliath. So the conqueror that wishes, that God wishes to send, what should he do? 
to make a decision of this magnitude to fight Goliath, there must have been something in David that we need to learn from, something that we need to review in David's past records that will give us the impetus or the power today as pathfinders to go where God would lead us. The first thing, before we go, we have to meet God. Before you go, you have to meet God. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37, the Bible says, by the example of the deliverance that God had worked in the, in the past of David, David has had this assurance that God was with him. It is in the, small, in the small places or in the small points in his life that David saw God's working in his life. And it's, it's, it's in our lives today, in the small details of our lives, we can see God working in our lives. God prepared David. David's preparation did not begin at the battleground. It began alone in, uh, while he was shepherding his flock. That those small spiritual and physical victories prepared him for the great challenges that he was about to face. So it might be like the young lady who was doing dishes in the court of Naaman. You could be one like that, doing dishes, doing small things, like putting your toys away. Those small things, seemingly small things, might prepare you to do a great work for God. So don't do them uh, hastily. Do them with, with confidence. Do them um, well. This will prepare you to do a good work for God. So David's preparation um, in the, while shepherding the flock was enough to prepare him uh, to work for God. The second lesson we learn is that before you go into the battle, make sure that God has been with you and that God has been, uh, you have been with God. Um, past experience of the readiness and power of God encourages men or encourage David to trust in God and to expect from him um, deliverance in all the future work that he needed to do for God. So it is important for us to have time with God, time with God in prayer, prayer in the morning. We say keep the morning watch. We should keep the morning watch. In these small um, moments with God, we learn to trust God. And in trusting God in the small in seemingly small uh, moments in life, we develop faith uh, that will move, certainly that will fight giants in our lives. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 26 reminds us that the conqueror, uh, the conqueror will bring God into the camp. David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Israel had spent 40 years speaking, speaking about a giant, but when he, immediately when David came, he started talking about God. To him, nothing was impossible with God. Same with us. We might find everyone around us focused on giants, the many giants that uh, they face in their lives, but we should remind them that God is greater than any giant that might come to us. So there is a power that God has. There's a power that God gives to his people when they speak of his uh, love and his, and, his, and his providence. That helps us to expect even more from God. We are not afraid of the many giants that we face as long as God is at our side. I'm reminded of Psalm chapter 125, verse 1, which says that those that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, immovable. Um, so when we trust in God, it gives us confidence. And God honors the confidence uh, of his people. And he will offer protection and deliverance to those that, whose faith uh, remains unshaken. The conqueror is not afraid as long as God is by his side. So you, you and me today, 
we should be able to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? God will fight for us. In the same way God fought for David while he was in the field uh, against the bear and against the lion, he had this assurance that God would fight for him, even against this uh, very uh, big giant. So the conqueror, again, another lesson that we learn is that the conqueror, when he goes in the name of the Lord, he does not listen to negative voices. Around us are people that are going to discourage us. Around us are people that are going to tell us to count the cost, to look at different uh, aspects of our lives, to look at, if I would give the example of the young little maid as well, to remind us that we are only but slaves in a foreign land. But this should not uh, hinder us from working for God. God is willing to work for anyone who will say, I will go. David does not say, I think God will deliver me. He says, God will surely deliver me. And it is because of this that ultimately David was victorious. He was victorious because God delivered him and because he had a confidence in God. May God help us today to develop this confident, uh, this confident spirit in his ability, not only in what, uh, in what we can do, but specifically in what he can use us to achieve. So the conqueror fills his mouth with God and he fills with his mouth with the word of God. John chapter 1 verse 1 tells us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and this word was God. It's not only that God, God's word is a word, but the word itself is God. The word itself expressed in our tongue or expressed with our tongue has power to create and to recreate. So we should be able to have his word at, the, at, at, our, at our tongue each and every time. And it should give us that assurance that he can do mighty works with, uh, through us. The strongest amongst us, as well as the weakest amongst us, must depend on God. And it is this constant dependence on God and this expectation upon God that gives us great victory. Expectation that rests on the creatures is liable to great disappointment. Many people have trusted in men. But David also says in Psalm that some trust in chariots, Psalm chapter 118, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, uh, some trust in great men, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a, a mighty tower, uh, he tells us again. So the conqueror, or if you would conquer evil, you must not uh, uh, think about God as, a, as someone who we tend to when things are wrong. We should think about God in every aspect of our lives. The conqueror who fight evil and who cut off its head. Verse chapter, uh, chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, uh, verse 51 says, David ran and stood over him. He stood over Goliath and he took his sword and he, and he killed him and cut off his head. The conqueror does not play with evil. The conqueror cuts off his head. So what do we need before we go? Before you go, you need to have an, account, an, an encounter with God. It is my prayer that we all develop an, account, an encounter with God. May we have an encounter with God to fulfill his mission. Uh, God wants us to get up and, and to fulfill his mission. It is when we have had an encounter with God that we can fulfill his mission. So my appeal to us this morning is, Though there are people surrounding us, there are soldiers like David, there, are, there is the king, um, King Saul. They surround uh, David and they talk more about the giant Goliath 
than they talk about God. May we be like David, who, having heard the cries of Goliath, do not focus on the, on the giant, but they focus on God and their, their experience with this God. Then the group that uh, represents David, that would be you and me. We pr I pray that we focus on God. I pray that uh, God helps us to achieve the great victories that he wants us to, to claim today. I pray that we are all found in David's group. God wants us to get up. God wants us to go and fulfill his mission. But first, we must desire. Uh, he most desires that we have an encounter with him. So remember, before you can go, you have to come and meet God. How many of us today wish uh, to have a real encounter with God, to have God prepare us to say as David says, your servant is here, I will go. If you feel the desire, um, close your eyes wherever you are so that we can pray. Shall I pray? Our kind and loving Father in heaven, we thank you again this morning. We thank you again today for the opportunity that has been ours to hear you speak to us. We thank you for the message that we heard today uh, from the life of David, that uh, you desire that we fight great battles for you. Today, David, uh, through the pen of inspiration in your scripture, reminds us that if we were to say, if we are to say, I will go, you will definitely go with us. Help us to uh, have an, account, an encounter with you and to find strength in your word and to find assurance of your enabling power through your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.